Well done, Jeremy. We are not political here today, but it is. You've got to make the comment. I'm glad to say that the Labor Party have joined the cause. They were the one who issued the licences and provided a, a royalty holiday for five years. Can you believe it? You mentioned the dairy farmer. Drew and I have done all of these gigs. We had a terrible, terrible experience at, um, at Oakey and again at Gunnedah. This beautiful woman, highly intelligent woman, 33 years of age, Ruth Armstrong, came to the microphone, got two little girls, and she started to speak very fluently, and then she started to cry. It was just terrible. And she said that she married a farmer, and she loved the life on the land, and she wanted to bring the children up on the land. She said, now I've been turned into a forensic investigator. I have to understand everything about soil quality. I have to know about government legislation, I have to understand the Mining Act, I'm up all night reading this stuff, and then they tell me that the life of these coal seam gas wells, right next to her at Cecil Plains, the life of these coal seam gas wells is 30 years minimum, and in crying and in tears she said, I'll be well over 60, and my children will be heading towards 40, and if we go as we are, there's no relief. I mean, this is... This is beyond belief. This is what we're doing to the psyche and the well-being of people. No one, this is criminal stuff. No one can do this. I recently spoke to Gundy Royal. She's an Australian trained hydrogeologist, but she's in France. She said to me, and I've just made a couple of notes here of exactly what she said. These are the experts, an Australian trained hydrogeologist. She said, the scale of these coal seam gas to liquid natural gas projects is unprecedented. She said, quote, groundwater issues will take years to emerge, by which time the industry has taken the profits, leaving the Australian taxpayer to deal with the liabilities. Now, all of this before, and as Bill said, and everyone will say here today, we can't say everything, though I wish I did the... Much of this information is in the address that I gave to the National Press Club, and now I can't even tell you where you can access that, but it's, there is a website for it, and really I would urge all of you to read that, to be armed when you go to the pub, go to the school, go to a rally. It's on a website somewhere. <laughs> Perhaps someone here knows. I don't know. I know Tony is here somewhere. You can make a quick call, Tony, to Paul, and ask him if Tony is here and ask him if Paul can give us the number of that website, because you can just then run the thing off, and all this information is here. I mean, the salt issue we haven't addressed today. She said, and she made this point, this is her, each, and, and Bill, you didn't mention this thing. Yeah. Quickly come up here. Because this was the thing that, this was this issue that terrified you. Just make that point about salt. Thanks very much, Alan. Um, a lot of the water that's extracted is seriously saline, and it is estimated in the advice of the Queensland Government for the, uh, for the, for the one mining tenement in Queensland of 7,000 wells is going to produce a million tonnes of granulated salt. The salt from that, uh, and I put this in the inquiry to the particular company, I said, what are you going to do with this salt? A million tonnes, 1.3 million tonnes of granulated salt. They said, oh, we're going to store it in an approved storage because we don't know what to do with it. There's no known use at the present time, although there is investigations. Yeah. There is no such thing. It is the most toxic, toxic substance to agriculture. And I said, do you realise how big the storage will have to be? No. I said, well, salt, it stores, it's 806 kilograms per cubic metre. I said, it stores at 34 degrees slope. So you'll have to have a storage. If you could square stack at 11.3 kilometres long, 30 metres wide and 10 metres high, but because it's sloped, it'll have to be 26 kilometres long, the stack of salt, out of one mining tenement. The salt that is produced, sorry to interfere with Alan, but the salt that's going to be produced from the known tenements in Queensland is about 20 million tonnes. That's it. Yeah, th this is it. And, and, and you know, these people have got no answers to any of this. This is what this woman said to me, this Gundy Royal hydrologist. She said, each megalitre of coal seam gas, because the process, as you understand, this is this process where you shove into the seam to separate the coal from the gas, and when you separate the coal and the gas, the gas shoots up and they collect the gas. And so you've got to shove, that's where all these chemicals come in to break the nexus between the coal and the gas, and all this water is shoved into the seam with all these chemicals. Gundy Royal said there were about 250 chemicals, and we've only been told about four. We don't know the toxicity of them. But then the salt comes out of the underground surface uh, above the ground.
And she said each megalitre of coal seam gas extracts, extracts approximately five to eight tonnes of salt. And as she said, that's previously stored safely underground. No government's even addressed this. And she said to me, how do you manage millions of tonnes of mobilised salt? Which I might add, there's also further soil experts who say that it destroys the productive capacity of the soil. Destroys the productive capacity of the soil. So that no answers to any of this. No answers to any of this. And this is what Jeremy is saying. Well, you better get some answers before you can go on. And it's not a question of just saying, oh, well, you know, these people have got licences. Oh, I'm sorry. You got them illegitimately. You didn't tell the truth. And you must pay the price for all of that. Oh, we'll take the government to court. Well, away you go. Away you go. Do your best. Because the public are not on side. I did want to share with you something that Bill Heffernan said to me on air, which I thought, and I read this many, many times, a lot of people's very, very good point. He said this, think 40 years is half a lifetime, he said, if we're lucky. Well, half a lifetime from now, he said to me on air, 40 years from now, 50% of the world's population will be poor for water, a billion people will be unable to feed themselves, 30% of the productive land in Asia will have gone out of production, and we're losing 1% of the world's agricultural land a year due to a series of reasons, everything from urbanisation to desertification. And he said, quote, we're putting trillions into defence and only a few billion into agriculture. And he ended by saying this to me, Alan, in the future, what's in your fridge is going to be far more important than what's in your garage. Energy for what's in the garage, but what's in the fridge, isn't that a good point? You've done a great job, Bill Heffernan. In the future, what's in your fridge, that's what we're here for today, is going to be far more important than what's in your garage.